All right, Tim, since you've been keeping a close eye on this sort of stuff, is the recent crypto drop, which I think happened just after you published your video, right? So, yeah, around that time, something so, like that. Yep. Uh, is that going to impact GPU availability, at least in the short term? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, not in the short term, no. Um, if anything, it's going to be a very long process mm -hmm. for things to return to normal. So, like a week of crypto declining in price is not going to have a, a significant impact. I wouldn't have thought too much either way. It's more long-term trends. Like if over a month we see the pricing continue to decline, then that's going to start impacting, you know, people are going to start selling the GPUs that they've been using for mining. You know, people are going to be less willing to invest high prices into buying new GPUs, which is going to affect GPU pricing and then availability. So any short-term trends that we see, I don't think are going to have too much of an impact. It's just going to be about, yeah, examining sort of the longer-term impacts of these things and seeing, you know, in a month from now, in two months from now, do we have a small amount of improvement? Because it's not going to be overnight where we suddenly, like we wake up one day, the crypto has gone down by 20% and suddenly there's like a million GPUs on the used market. Yeah. When we go back to a time like 2018, the last crypto boom, that wasn't that wasn't what happened. Over mm -hmm. time, you know, people start choosing to opt out of mining at all sorts of different times. You know, people, one person might have been mining for longer, so they're more willing to get out sooner. Other people are going to keep their products for longer. So all that stuff is going to be factored in and certainly it's going to be, you know, second half of the year if things continue in their current trend. Of course, if things go the other way, then that's going to impact that timeline. So there's a lot of things to play out here and we just really have to hope for the best. But short-term gains, yeah, unfortunately, there's not a lot of good news to share on that front. No, there's still a lot of pent-up demand from gamers as well. So Yeah, that's right. The second card start to head back down towards the MSRP. Don't want to get anyone excited, by the way. But the, second, the demand's just going to be crazy. Um, I mean, you think it's crazy now, but... It, a lot of people are sitting by on the sidelines going, I'm out. I'm not doing anything. I, I'm not interested. I, I've given up all the, I've given up the idea of buying a current yep. generation GPU. I'll just wait it out and I'll come back in a year or whatever. But then if, you know, things start to turn around, it looks like you could upgrade. Then a lot of people will return to the market and want to buy one. And then, yeah. So a lot of things have to change and it'll be a slow process as you say, but hopeful that it improves as the year goes on yeah it's going to be interesting to see you know you're talking about msrps for example you know how that's affected as well by used gpus coming to the market we were just talking about this it, on the live stream it a felt bit, weird but... saying like msrp in relation yeah to i know card. but you know there's going to be market pressure from two directions you know obviously retail is not going to be able to sell their cards for as ridiculously high prices anymore because the demand won't be there and then that's going to be exacerbated by people choosing to buy a used GPU instead of buying a new GPU. Yep. But all that stuff, as we sort of talked about, happens slowly over time. It isn't just one day, you know, an so OEM is like, oh, I'm not going to, uh, my GPU is $1,000 less. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, $100 per week or yeah. $100 per month. Yep. And then over time, hopefully that, the demand that you're saying is definitely still there from people that have wanted to upgrade to this, what should be a very, very good generation of which, GPUs. Which is why it will take so long yeah. to slowly wind down because if it was just one thing that was creating the demand and that thing turned off overnight and then as you say some people were tossing up when they sort of opt out or give up on it you would see it sort of flood back pretty quickly but yeah because there's still so many gamers that are wanting to get cards and whatever yeah it'll, it'll be a slow process yeah that's right so yeah i think the positive thing for people wanting to get into that sort of market down the track who's sort of given up they're waiting for prices to come down is that the sales data that companies like NVIDIA and AMD are sort of saying, you know, we are shipping a ton of GPUs and presumably a lot of those are going to mining yeah. means that once that demand shifts over from mining to gaming, there will be a lot of cards available for people to buy. So hopefully at some point, as we've been talking about, that will all come to play. But yeah, the pent up demand from gamers is is very, very real. And even in something like the consoles, which you can't mine on a console, Something like a PlayStation Five is still very difficult to purchase, yeah, right. and it's that those were launched around the same time as these current gen GPUs. So, and that just speaks to the gaming demand, really. Yeah, exactly. So this will be an ongoing issue, but hopefully, this you know by the end of the year, we're sort of talking about a more positive market. That's that's what we need to look for, not not MSRP straight away, but yeah. definitely. Oh well, we're not being charged four times as much or three times as much. Maybe we're down below below double. That would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think we're see. all looking forward to it sort of starting a trend in a, a more positive direction yeah, rather right. than go the other way.